What's up everybody? Welcome back to FNG Academy. I just had a quick announcement. I'm proud to say that we've been helping people get selected for three years now. I've been getting a lot of messages about uh, people thanking us and saying that they just graduated from uh, selection and they got selected. Uh, people graduating the Q course. Uh, one of my buddies just sent me a video uh, from the Charlie committee. Yes. If you guys have ever heard of the FNG Academy, raise your hands and all their hands went up and it just filled me with pride. Um, so part of the way that we do that is making sure that you guys are physically fit and ready for selection. And the way we've been doing that for the past couple years is by sending you to a Green Beret we know and trust, Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. So if you want to get selected, you need to be in the best shape possible and you need a programmer who knows what they're talking about. So go check out Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. Use code word BUCK to get a discount. Tell him we sent you and hook you up. Congrats to everyone who's been getting selected lately and we'll see you guys on the next one. All right. All right. What's up, guys? Welcome to this episode <laughs> of Beers and Breakdowns. In this episode, I got my boy, Brendan Shaw, with me. <laughs> oh, and my God. He, no, he got the bootleg. I'm like, got, I'm, I'm like, I'm like the Wish the version. Boy, I'm like, the, the, hey, I'm like the Temu version of <laughs> Brendan Shaw, bro. <laughs> Yo, we got the funny Brendan Shaw with us. Hey, I'll go with that. Hey. And in this episode, we're breaking down actually a bad show, something I really like, SEAL Team. You guys have been asking for us to finish it. We're on to episode two of SEAL Team. Does it hold up? If you guys, if, or if Brennan doesn't know, this, the, the, uh, you guys have been saying that this show at a certain season takes like a completely left turn. I can't wait to get to that because right now watching this show initially is amazing. Also this show fair. is fire. But... According to the, and comment down below, and if you guys can do us a please, do us a favor, do us a solid, like, subscribe, send a comment down below, go check out the FNG Academy. If you're interested in becoming an SF, we got the Ruck Trainers, we got our boots coming out, a little shameless plug, I apologize, but Brendan would appreciate it if you hit the like and subscribe button. But you guys have been telling us that at some point, this show just like veers left. I'm not ready for that, man. Bro, that's I'm not like, ready I'm for like, it. I'm it's like, so man, good. Man, come on, dude. Like, it has such a good tone to it right now that I'm like, it's so good. Eh, How do you ruin such mastery? Like, it's so damn good. At least episode one and two were early on, but I'm, yeah, I'm almost excited to see that veer because I, if it does veer, I'm gonna destroy it. <laughs> <laughs> like the way go. people talk about it, I feel like all the operators are gonna walk in with man buns and and <laughs> Starbucks coffees, and they're all, they're all just gonna be like, like in Birkenstocks and be like, they're like guys, Pilates, five thirty. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like we're not stretching enough, and we're doing too much shooting and not enough stretching. Oh, so we God. need to change this up. Like that's how they portray it. Like it's, it's just... crazy because that's how he talks when he's off camera. <laughs> like, so it's just weird. For a second, I was like, oh, I forgot we're filming anyway. Oh, he's so that's crazy. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. He's like, call me Brendan again. Yeah, yeah. 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 Brendan Yo, again. Brendan is butthurt right now. One of those is the best. Uh, Sharon, it's pretty nasty stuff. Bucket full of kill every man, woman on the planet. But you're probably thinking about the X. It's widely regarded as the deadliest substance man's ever created. Is that Kurt? So we're gonna actually. <laughs> Ryan, who says you never take us anywhere nice? Yo, was it a great intro? I don't know if they're gonna go after the Taliban or vampires, but. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I was telling uh, Sean that like it took me a minute to try to approach this show just because every time I see my boy, I just think. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and it sucks. <laughs> and it's like I'm not trying to discredit the show, but it's like I see him, and I just remember with the the cheesy graphics, he'd be like, ah, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah and it's just like, so now it's like now I'm supposed to believe this dude just did all the training, and now he's like, you know, a uh, uh, seal. And then he changed it. The, they changed their name, his name to Jason Hayes. Dude, I mean, that's like the like, like you can't wipe that. Up it's anymore. an American <laughs> household <laughs> name. Like, that's like, because, you know, they were going to let him keep that last name. They're like, yeah, no, that's, like, a, that's not seal enough. <laughs> like, Jason Hayes. <laughs> that's, uh. There's not a seal in history with a last name Boreanaz, <laughs> yeah, yeah, my yeah, friend. Yeah. I do like the way that they initially brief the mission in this. So it's like, you, you got intel analysts, like, giving the team guys, like, hey, this is what we got going on. This is what we need to do. And then you get a lot of questions from the team guys, like, hey, who are we going after? Why? Like, what? What? You know, and that's how important. much. How much do you guys give the 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 intelligence guys? So we don't. It's it's different per unit, right? So our intel guy is a green beret. So we have a fox. So oh, he's okay. one of the team All guys. Right. So he's yeah. like, hey guys, I I found a cache. 
uh, a weapons cache. This is what we're going to go after. Or I found a, a high value target. We're developing our own our own intelligence. Okay, that makes sense. So it's it's portrayed, and I wasn't a tier one guy, so I don't know, but it's portrayed in these tier one movies that you always have an outside intelligence analyst that comes in and says, hey, I need you guys to operate and do this. And they're like, okay, well, you could tell us who, and we tell you how. Gotcha. Because in my head, I thought it's like a in the Army, they have like the military intelligence guys. Usually it's like a 35 Fox in November, mm -hmm. and they'll just like kind of like type up a report of like what you know, their considerations are, you know? So that's why I was like, with this, I'm like, I've never been part of those meetings, so I don't know. Like, I don't know if you guys, you know, actually have the person there, like in this, where they're speaking out and saying, hey, you know, we got so, this concern over here. You guys have to make a plan for this, you know? Right. So this is this seems more tier one. So it's like the next level up to where it's like, hey, the, the government has, or this entity has this issue, and we need you guys to solve it. So it's one entity briefing another entity okay gotcha. so then that's the importance of all the questions and, and the realism of all the questions because you're two entities with two different capabilities and you're trying to combine in order to accomplish one mission yeah that makes sense so i just i just feel like like indirectly there's no way you guys aren't like talking right or like saying like comments like him and i i talked to jason hayes's character but i'm like i could see you guys saying some like that bro just yeah, tell it for just sure guy, like, but you know. in the green berets it's in the Green Berets, that sounds weird. But in the on the team for uh, an ODA, our intel guy is a team guy. So he already knows our capabilities. He already knows what we're, we can go after, what's going to get approved. So it's less – we skip this step. Gotcha. Okay. And okay. then we just go to, hey, guys, this is what we're going to do, and then – uh, briefs the team and then the team's like hey come up with your contingency planning and it's more about the team getting it approved by hire to give us the thumbs up so we can go do what we want to do are you guys are you guys like always like praying like please like let us just like do what we got to do or is yeah. there ever stuff that you're just like i don't want to do that yeah of course so it's like we could have missions that come down from hire like hey we need you guys to go do this like and then we're directed but that's not the fun stuff the fun stuff is when we choose like what is our team like we want to get weapons we want to get high value targets we want to go after x y or z and then we can go send our fox starts doing his intelligence his an analysis and then he says okay well i found a target based on information from our previous missions from previous teams missions that makes sense, yeah. intel that we have from sources for over the past few years it's like it's like justifying you guys being activated in exactly a sense, right? so yeah, we're we're activating ourselves right but it's hit or miss, and that's what, you know, Green Brace can be open for anything. It's like it could have, uh, you know, another – someone else needs us as a QRF or our command wants us to accomplish this mission, and now we're – multiple teams are fighting to achieve that mission because it's a good one, right? So let's say higher command comes in and says, hey, we got a high-value target. We need the best team to go after this high-value target. We all know that that's a good-ass mission. We're going to go kill an important person, like – Let's go. <laughs> you guys are like, put me in, coach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I'm ready. Everybody like, wants yeah. it. And that's the environment of a Green Beret. So <laughs> yeah. now we're competing with other teams in our company because let's it's so to get the, the job. So now we're all putting together different plans. So let's say this team wants to do a, a helo infill. This team wants to do a halo infill. This team wants to take uh, to drive in. We all approach it different ways, how to do the same mission, and then command looks at it and says, okay, I think this is the best plan. You guys win. But I like this scene because it's it's like you're briefing from an outside entity. You're briefing them. They have their questions because now they have to take those questions, formulate that into their own plan, and then take that plan and then brief their guys. They're a tier one element, so no one's going to come in, CIA, FBI, whoever it is, is not, they're not going to come in and tell a tier one element how to do their jobs. So they're going to say, this is what we want to accomplish. We want to kill this guy or capture this guy or whatever the case. And the tier one element has to ask all the questions and be like, because they're going to figure out the how. No one's going to tell them, you're going to infill in, you're going to kill this guy, and you're going to get out. They're going to be like, we'll do what we do. You tell us what you want, we'll tell you the how. And then if we need something that we don't have as far as resources, we'll come back and, and ask for those. Gotcha. And it's crazy that this this show just, like, nails all that. Jump in. Hey, ho. Oh, yeah. Hey, ho. We'll be allowed in Iraqi airspace, then fly to the target on the canvas. That's right. Problem is getting out. How far to the border? 
18 kilometers. What's the nearest quick reaction force? Special Forces ODA working with Peshmerga at the border. Great, it's easy having standing by. Once we secure the target, they come and they pick us off home. Hey, we've been seeing Russian troops in the border areas, yeah? DOD will never authorize any ground movement with possibility of Russian contact. DOD has no balls. We can get you local vehicles. How many? God, I love this scene. They're just breaking down everything. They're like, where's the QRF? We got an ODA over here. They don't even have to question whether or not the ODA will want to do it. Obviously, an ODA will, would love to be on standby to go help an, another operator. What's an ODA? Operational Detachment Alpha, SF gotcha. guys. Yeah, I'm just making sure. I was like, yeah, yeah, probably people don't even know like what half this stuff is. You know yeah, I mean? so Hey Ho yeah. is high altitude, high opening. So uh, it's just a, a different infill platform. So that way you could do a standoff way away. So they're tr obviously trying to break borders down. And that's why the infill platform is so important. If you do like a hey low, high altitude, low opening, you have to drop over top of your target because you're going to free fall straight down, pull your parachute, and then you have limited amount of space to travel. But if you do a hey ho, you could do drop way out here, open, and then fly all the way down. But the risk, undetected. right, is that people could like see you though, right? Like, well, kind of see you dropping down, like or notice it, you know? At night, no one's gonna see you. Gotcha. Okay, okay. So, like, as long as your aircraft isn't detected, no one's gonna see men floating down from the sky. Like, so there's there's nothing that could detect human beings, like floating on their parachutes. Their aircraft is what's gonna Dude, be detected. So I heard this like horrible story, right? Like it was like, like they're doing like an operation, right? And uh, cause I was talking to like one of the guys that was like supporting us on uh, one of our operations in Iraq, you know? And he was saying that there was like a pilot that just like instinctively put on the navigation lights while they're conducting an operation, which the navigation lights are like blinking, giving away, you know? So of course, as soon as they land, they were just in like a compromised like position just because it's like, this guy's like, hey bro, they're down here, you know, and yeah. it's like sucks because of course by the time you notice, you could shut it off and just go to the infrared lights, but it's like it's too late. You already just late, yeah. you already just said basically, hey bro, they're like landing right here, you know. Yeah, that's like so it's like that's dude, like doing a, a a white light ND. Right. Yeah. It's like dude. come on, man. Yeah. You, but do you do you guys uh, encounter like like hiccups like that? Like normally, always. like always. Yeah. It's funny because people always think like, oh. This will never happen. And it's like no, always like I, something goes wrong. I hear like stories like that. I'm like that can't happen. You yeah, know? Like, and I'm not saying that particular instance yeah, ever happened yeah. to us, but it's like there's always something. There's always something that somebody overlooks gotcha. and that that ends up having second and third order effects. But I just love this breakdown because it's like okay, we have to have some standoff because of borders. Yeah. So we could do a hey ho. We could do a way high up, do full wall wall locker, full uh, which is. You know, you have your equipment on you between your legs. You have oxygen. So that way you could be, you know, coming from a, a huge standoff. So the aircraft can come like this and turn around and never cross international yeah, right. airspace and be detected. But we're already out. And then just free flow. The downsides to hey -ho is the temperature for how long you're up there. Um, it's staying in a stack in a hey -ho is extremely difficult it's nighttime you're under nods um your hands get freezing because you're up in the cold atmosphere for so long Dude, it's cold. like hard to control your parachute <laughs> yeah uh making sure that you're released where you're supposed to release and you have enough distance to travel to actually hit your mark because if they drop you off the wrong point i mean you're falling so even under parachute you're still falling and you only have enough control over how far you're going to go right right so but then they, they just cover so much in this little brief. How are we going to get in? Who's going to be our QRF? How are we going to get out? He said, getting in is not a problem. Hey, ho, problem solved. How are we going to get out? Well, there's an SF team. Well, we still don't know if the SF team is preoccupied, if they're going to be available to do QRF on that date. There's a lot of assumptions. Uh, so they're basically just problem solving. But it's cool. They're coming out with like a general outline, like, mm -hmm. hey, this is what we could probably do, you know, and yep. then working like the kinks out as they go. And then they're figuring out who has to come with them. They're like, oh, we need two uh, EOD guys, explosive experts, because they have to evaluate uh, the explosives that they're looking at. Or it's, um, what is it, when something's uh, like a chemical? Oh, the Seaburn guys? Yeah. Yeah. So they said EOD, but I imagine it would be the Seaburn yeah, guy. Yeah. Because EOD's explosives, but they're looking for chemical warfare. But then again, they get EOD paired with the doctor, and he's essentially the Seaburn guy. Gotcha. 
And then, so that's an issue for them because they're like, hey, you got to take the doctor. Well, that doctor's a liability. He's not a shooter. So he doesn't know how to shoot, move, communicate. That means he's going to slow us down. Now we have to look out for him. Now we have to shoot on his behalf. We have to, he's not as fit as all of us. He can't, he's not used to moving in all our equipment. So he's pulling us back. And now, so now we have not two outside entities. We have three outside entities. So every time you add somebody that's not one of it's your just own. It's a variable. It's, it's a like, variable yeah. that everything. We're used to training together and operate together. So questions? Yeah, how come we don't post a top five? Tier one level? Top five candidates just means you met the expectation. Anything else is unset. <clears throat> so, so guys in the top five, they don't even know that they made the grade? End of the selection and training. If you're still here to get drafted into a tier one squadron, then you know you made the grade. It blows my mind that anyone will put up with that guy's attitude. Yeah, that, I was like, and I was like, and I, obviously I'm not in that that realm, so I'm like, bro, I'm sure that that guy would be like, hey, bro, if I told you like we don't, you know, like you don't need to worry about it, that's it, like, that's, that's it, that's, that's it, you know. In which they explain well in the show because this guy's dad is like a legend. He wrote a book. He was like this big head honcho, so he gets some leeway because of his lineage, mm. and that's and he's cocky, and it, it shows and it bites him in, the uh, but. At the same time, in episode one, like he's faced with a decision to make. He gets to go on an operation with a tier one unit. He snaps a guy in the face, so he's got a kill under his belt at in the tier one level. But the crazy thing is, like, this is how these selections operate, whether it's SEAL Team 6 or CAG. It's like you could get – first of all, one of my teammates got selected for CAG, and his whole class of selection, three people got selected. How many how many people were in this class? Probably I don't know. I I would guess like, like, like estimate. I would estimate like 50, 60 people. And that's already That's so crazy to go through all that and then just be like, "Hey bro, like yeah, <laughs> you so, didn't make it, you know." So like, of damn. all these people, they're already operators a lot of them, whether they're rangers, whether they're C, uh I think seals can go to CAG, uh Marsoc. So all these all these people are already operators a lot of them. Some regular army can go, but mostly it's going to be an operator already. So you're already going at such a high level to get selected to go because you have to get approved based on your packet, your PT test. You still have to get approved to go to selection. Gotcha. So once you go to selection, you're already – that's why he's like top 5% is normal. You're already top 10%, top 8% just to go to selection. And then three people make it. Now you're already top 5% of the entire military force. Some really good guys don't get selected based on needs of the unit, right? So it's not to say that only the best of the best of the best get Wait, What do you mean by that? Like needs of the unit? like, like or they... Personalities. Gotcha. It's such a small unit. From what, I've, from what I understand, it's, it's, because it's such a small unit, they could be so selective about personality types. So if they already have a team full of A-type hitters that are like, aggressive and gotcha, gotcha. like they don't need that guy again they need something some you know like a pirate type that's it like just, it just sucks man to go and like let's say like you obviously you proved yourself uh you know you test your metal and you're like already at that level but because of your personality type they're like oh we already got the guy who's like hard yep. nosed or whatever it's, and they're just like sorry bro you know yeah. and it, they're just like all right bro but you know good job and mm -hmm. it's like damn dude i don't know my pride would hurt so bad bro like yeah. damn i'm not you know i'm not in you know my buddy, the, he got killed, Golan, he was a classmate of mine, and he went to selection for CAG as a regular Army guy, Ranger qualified, regular Army, uh, and they told him, hey, go get some SF experience and then come back. So he did. He went and got SF experience, came back, made it to the end, and – or I'm sorry. So he made it to the end, and then they told him, go get some SF experience and come back. So he went and became SF. And then – as his time was about to run out, I asked him. I was like, "Hey, bro, you gonna go back to yeah, selection?" Yeah, of course, yeah. And he was like, nah, "I don't. I just don't think it's the life for me anymore." And then he went and got killed in combat. In this green platoon, it's the same thing. So where it's like, just because you got selected, you still have to fight for your position to get picked up for the the teams. So in green platoon and in CAG, you can go to OTC Operators Training Course. So you pass selection for CAG, you got picked up for OTC. You could fail OTC at any point. You could fail green platoon, I think they call it green platoon, at any point and get dropped. Even if you make it all the way to the end. 
So let's say you don't get dropped for the whole green platoon OTC. You make all the way to the end, and no team picks you up. So nobody says we want that guy. Dude, that sucks. Then bro. you still get dropped. It's, it's like it's like it's not being picked for like like basketball. And you're just sitting there like I'm ready to play, coach. You're like, nah, bro. It's it's like, like <laughs> it's like literally hurts. you're a football player, and they say, okay, you got drafted to the NFL, and you're like, what? And they're like, but a a team still has to pull you recruit into you. Recruit, recruit you. Yeah. And if like... so, even though you're technically in the NFL or, or capable to go to the NFL. If no team picks you, bye bye. Eleven thirty-five. We mostly did all the ice chips. Right, all the ice chips. Right. Okay. All I'm saying is, maybe you want to sit this one out. I do not. We already talked to the doctor this morning. Said we're on track for the end of the month. And if it happens, Naima can get a mom to hold the ice chips. You gotta hold the ice chips. Not, I will. I'll make it. I'm good to go, coach. Put me in. Since we're the only ah, got you. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, Dude. you thought you were one of the boys? <laughs> yeah, it was like it was like that awkward <laughs> high school moment. We like, hey, yo, <laughs> and they're just like, <laughs> no, <Nope. laughs> it's like because he went out on a mission with them. He thinks that he's one of the boys. He got to kill with them, and he doesn't realize like, bro, you're still in training. Like, nobody's picked you up yet. Like, like he's a he. Like, it's just funny because I think he feels like he made the A team. Yeah. And there's like, bro, you're still in the tryouts. Like, you're right. You're not even in this yet, you know. And for him, it was a super dumbass move because not because oh, I got familiarity with these guys. You're doing it in front of all the other candidates. So you're trying to say. I, I got a one up on all you guys. Yeah, it's a, it's like a favoritism thing. Yeah, man. you just never like it if if you would have gave the nod, you know how big a deal it is to like if you would have gave the nod and he would have gave the nod back to one of the the senior guys on the SEAL Team Six, you would have been essentially telling your boys, your peers, like, don't f- with me, I'm I'm already there. Luckily, that that guy has enough no, you know whereabouts to be like you bro like you you didn't earn your spot well, I, th- I think it's like insulting to these guys because it's like dude these it guys is insulting had to, to you them. had to like prove yourself to get like on that level this guy's just like oh, i'm cool, already there yeah I'm, like, yeah, yeah bro he's What's like up, hey, boys? hey he's like he's like he's like hey bro it's cool to be equals right yeah and it's like, i get the hell out of <laughs> my like, face bro. yeah <laughs> and that's a that's <laughs> annoying when it comes to that operator stats because like yeah sure you have an ego bro but you need to understand the game yeah and if you don't have enough like uh maturity to understand the game you're playing the fact that you're surrounded by guys trying to be on their team and you're gonna be like hey what's up boys and he's like come on man don't be a child hey hey look at me look at me relax silver lining if that were to happen to us you and i are both gonna be unconscious when we burn in okay that's a good thing let's do this <laughs> my boy yeah. said excuse me <laughs> yeah he was like he's like i don't see the positive uh i was trying to wait for it. Feel it yeah, yeah. <laughs> he hits him with the silver lining is you'll be unconscious when you die yeah. and the guy's like tough yeah, <laughs> like i'm a doc i'm trying to die in the first out, place the only black guy. yeah there you go and then you smash into the ground at 100 it was like how he walks off to and he's just like Man, I really helped that guy out today. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I really made him understand the situation's yeah. okay. Three, two, one. Hmm. Yo, so um, look how easy that was, right? They had the nods on. They put their lasers on the guy's head. Nice, easy, easy pull of the trigger, easy squeeze. Uh, it's funny because they say, don't squeeze the trigger, pull the trigger. Who gives a <laughs> nice, easy <laughs> compression of the trigger and <clears throat> right to his head. My One of my going into combat for the first time, I was like not even thinking about my laser. I'm walking out of my room and all the lights are off in the hallway and my buddy Jerry's laying prone in the hallway. And I was like, what the <laughs> f- are you doing? <laughs> and he's like, you didn't zero your laser? And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and you're like you're like what laser? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like I mean I just I just kind of assumed that when I pulled it it would be close enough or that I would just use my optics you know like I didn't think I didn't put two and two together that's like hey you could be getting in gunfights at night and then really relying on your night vision laser. So he had all his lights out he had his nods just everyone else is trying to chill before mission this motherfucker is like full battle rattle laying prone zeroing his laser in the darkness 
in the hallway. That's so I was like, well, he's been in a lot more combat than me. So I did the same he did. Got prone, turned out the lights, got my nods, and started zeroing my laser. 25, it was like a long-ass hallway. So it's like 25 yards down the hallway. You taped up the, the laser marker. So you have, you know, point of aim and then laser. Uh, it's all on that you printed just make paper. It meet it, yeah, meet what you're aiming at. Yeah, so yeah. it's like you just all you have to do is line it up. Yeah. It's an easy thing, but I didn't think about it. And then sure enough, we get in a uh, gunfight at night, and all I have is my nods on, and I turn on my laser, and I'm just doing a, a rope on this dude to shoot at him. And I was like, thank God that <laughs> can zero dude, my laser. You know how embarrassing it would have been on your like your first like mission, and your shit's not zero, so it just hits like to the right of the yeah, guy. Yeah, and just, he's like, he's like, oh. Shit. He's like <laughs> under attack. He's got so yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, and then it's like top 5%, huh? Yeah. Like, <laughs> just, yeah, dude. And then what would you have said? You're just like, sorry, guys, I didn't I didn't dial it in before we got here. <laughs> like, Did you guys zero your lasers? Yeah, That right there is two of the hardest things in, in CQB there is. A long hallway with multiple doors, so a school, um, a hospital, things like that. You're having to deal with so many threats at the same time and clearing hallways with those threats and in cross coverage and then flowing into the rooms. And, you know, that is like really difficult. And you have to work hard as a stack and not trade people out in order to get that right. So that way you're constantly covering because you're covering long, you're covering angles, and then you have to flow in. Are you going to flow in right and everybody flows in this way? Are you going to split stack and go this way? So it's team SOPs as to how you're going to cover a hallway. But if you want to get good at CQB, going to an abandoned building where it's like a, an old hospital or a school or a school after closing hours for like police, for law enforcement and SWAT and stuff like that, that's the absolute money maker it's like so because there's always a variable that you can't account for though right like you know like there's no because you have to make the decision on the spot which is what you see right like uh and some of these buildings like you going into them do you already know the layout or is there like always kind of like a hidden element uh, most buildings are going to have similar layouts so gotcha, as long gotcha, as you okay. know you're going into a hospital or a school or some kind of public like big building like mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. it's almost always going to have a hallway with doors stacked on top of each other facing yeah, yeah, each other yeah. so you could plan for, but that's a really hard thing to clear if you guys don't work as a team gotcha. how to clear that in your sops like who's going to cover six how are you going to flow are you going to like like again you could split team and go cross coverage on the doors typically you're going to flow into one room own that room cross the hallway own that room come back out into the hallway once you go into a room the hallway is a danger zone again because you left it unsecured right right because what if you go into a room the bad guy comes out in the hallway and switches and now, rooms. now he could take you know a couple of you guys that, out to, that bounce into that, that right that, yeah. so you don't just leave anybody in the hallway you're going to go in cross coverage and that's why i love that you see their lasers like coming across like this uh, so that way if anyone pops out, bah, 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 and then you have, while this is cross coverage, the, the two man on both sides is covering long. So now you have long cross, and then you have the rear guy covering six. It always kills me in like, uh, shows or like movies when they're like, uh, they're just like nonchalant with like flagging everybody. Yeah. And that's why like, I do like that these, like it showed like the laser to see like their, their point of aim, like for right. the weapons and stuff. Cause that is something that kills me because it's like, dude, you would get your head bitten off if you right. like ever flag somebody and they're just like, you know, usually just like, sometimes they'll be looking in a different direction than their weapons pointing. And I'm like, yeah. bro, you would never, you would never do that. You're like looking this way. So if something does happen, you're like, oh God. And you like, you know what I mean? It's just, I don't know, it's not even practical. So like- Right, cause reaction like times. Yeah, if I'm exactly. looking at this, and yeah. now I have to see that, realize it's a threat, and then act on the threat, and then move towards it. It doesn't make it's, any sense. It doesn't make sense. And then, too, if you get startled and your your weapon's pointing in a different direction, you know, if you pop something off just because, you know, you, like, get caught by surprise, now you don't even know what you're shooting at, you know? Yes. So there's, like, little details like that that I, I could appreciate from the show, right. you know? And then the, the number one hardest thing in CQB to own as a team, stairways. So then you yeah. got stairways that you have uh, clear, you could see through, 
So now you, you're you always in danger. You have stairways that have solid walls, so you're only sometimes in danger. You could always look over and shoot down. So to cover, like, uh, you know, up multiple stairs and then to cover your, your sector in a stairway while trying to stay against the wall but not rubbing the wall and then have guys. Then you once you get round, you have to lock in the next flight and then the guys flow past you and then you become the last man to come up, right? So it's like, it's a lot. Stairways is a lot. Hallways in church, in uh, you know schools and hospitals and stuff is a lot to cover. And law enforcement has it tough because law enforcement doesn't get to train as one unit. I train with you and then, but we get a hot call and then Abel shows up and now he's with me. I've never even met this guy. He's in a different so you, district. You gotta, you gotta kind of like try to like, expect what he's going to do with never knowing this guy. Right. Like never I've never worked yeah. with him before. I may That's not rough, know man. who this guy is. So you see in a lot of shootings where, um, you know, someone's Johnny on the spot in their tactics and all this stuff, but now he's like over-articulating what to do to the person he's with. He's never worked with that guy before, and that's why. So he's, you know, having to identify, is this guy a hitter? Does he want to go in? Is he scared? Is he pulling back? Is he really aggressive? Is his tactics squared away? All of that on top of trying to be a good tactician. So oh, cops are coming yeah. in way behind the curve and essentially figuring it out on the fly. So the hardest time I've ever had in tactics-wise has been a police officer. And, and people don't realize police officers get no credit for tactics. And it's like... It's the hardest job to be a good tactician. (laughs) I got this, Ray. So you, as a civilian, you picked that up? Yeah. Like, it looked like that, a dick out, move? Out of order, yeah. Yeah, so you would never you would never bump a one-man. Never. Like, if I'm one-man, that's my spot. I own it. Right. And it's the most dangerous spot, but usually operators are going to be aggressive in, like, competing for that number one-man spot. So for you to come and bump me is a huge big dick. And then, like, you would never do that unless you're really trying to be an asshole. But obviously in this show, he's got a kid. It, like, I knew as soon as I watched it, I knew he was trying to protect him. Right. So he's not doing it to be a dick. Like, he's got a kid on the way. He's just trying to, yeah, like he has good intentions. He's right. like, yeah, yeah. He's trying to He's trying to be a meat shield for him. Yeah, right, right. I was like, hey, no, you're not taking number one man spot. I'm going to take the most dangerous spot in the stack from you. Right. To right. protect you. The rest of us are in a stronghold this position against a very large enemy coming our way. I expect, once we're engaged, the Green Berets at Sinjar will respond to our tick. Otherwise, if they don't, pretty sure we'll be overrun. What a stupid plan. (laughs) (laughs) And you're like, I've love the show I know, I was about yeah to about to glorify yeah this yeah dude because dude you know, he did he, did he just did like an alamo speech he's like we're probably gonna lose but if you guys want to stay you're welcome like what a dumbass plan you're a tier one element with an objective and you go in and see kids and women like suffering because of what the, the enemy did to them and now all of a sudden you're overcome with grief and empathy so now you're willing to put all of your men basically sentence them to death. That's what you're saying. You're saying, unless the Green Berets are going to feel enough like pull, which is not like the Green Berets decision, right? It's the command's decision. What if those Green Berets already are involved in a tick? You're f- So if those Green Berets were sitting there that you're counting on to be QRF, let's say of all the theater, somebody gets in a tick. We can go anywhere. We can jump on a bird and go anywhere to protect anybody. So somebody else gets in a tick before you, those Green Berets get called out to go get in that gunfight. That's it. They're not going to deviate from a gunfight to go to another gunfight. So if they're gone, they're gone. So you're essentially saying, I'm going to hope, I'm going to risk all my men's lives because we're facing certain death 
if the Green Berets don't spin up to yeah, come protect like, us. It's like a hell of a gamble, right? It's and a stupid you're... gamble because but... <laughs> you fell in love with uh, some kids that you've never seen before. It's like I we all want to say like, oh, we're going to do the right thing. We're superheroes. Uh, but it's like, dude, there's atrocities happening all the time. This is war. You can't be the hero for every single person you come across. And you are you absolutely have to put your men first because think about this. A tier one element who's capable of saving lives and changing the course of history is more valuable alive continuing to operate than a group of random people that you've never met in your life. You're risking the, like the highest, uh, most elite operators on the planet who could potentially do all this good over these particular people. It, it's ridiculous. It's like that, that question. It's like, hey, the, the train's veering off on two tracks. There's one person here and there's 50 people on this side. Which one are you going to have it go down? You know, and there, some of them are like the kid pulls off the train and like, oh, he goes around. It's like, that's not an option. You yeah. have to pick. And if you don't pick the one over the 50, then you're fucking re- stupid. All right, guys. So hope you enjoy that episode. I love this show so far. I absolutely love it. Like, did this last scene kind of bother me a little bit? Of course, but that's the point. It doesn't make it a bad show. It's still a dope-ass show. Yeah. He made a decision, and there's a lot of people out. There's a lot of operators that would have made that decision and would have ran with that because they're human beings, and they get to make whatever decisions they want. Um, and the higher up you go, the more power your decisions have and the more they influence other people. So hope you enjoy that episode. I think it's a badass show. I can't wait to go to season three or to to, uh, episode three. And honestly, I can't wait to see where you guys say that it deviates. Because I want to see how (laughs) how such a good show could possibly deviate from such a good path. Like that's almost that's like saddening to think about. But if you enjoy that episode, please do us a favor. Like, subscribe, hit the comments. You know, tell us what you think about it. What's your opinion? What do you guys want to see next? Um, And we'll see you on the next episode. Peace.